but you can call me Mando Bug if you like. Links to everything, like where you can find me on social media will be in the description box below. So today this video I have for you is my works in progress. So starting out with what you guys have already seen before is Japan Sleeves by Hoki Lucatelli. And I just bound off the bottom hem this morning. So, I can show you guys the sweater and it looks more of it has a it has more of a shape of a sweater now so the neck is right here which I will be picking up and knitting a collar soon and striped on down the body um, the body was knit on US size 4 and the little ribbing at the bottom you can see how it's pulled tight down there I'll show you a close-up of that the ribbing down there at the bottom was switched over to US 2. The pattern called for 2.5, but I only had size 2, so I figured that little half probably wouldn't make too big of a difference. And so far I like the kind of fabric that it produced anyways. Um, the pattern just called for a loose bind off, so I went ahead and went with my favorite loose stretchy bind off, which is Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. And I think that it was a good choice because it uh, looks nice and tight down there, but um, it stretches tremendously. So, and um, the cool thing about the ba the bind off is I found that even if you do like stretch it out like this, if it were to go over my head, um, it doesn't completely stretch the fabric out because you can see it's still gathered down at the bottom. So, it'll give a nice tight little fit around my waist, which my hips are bigger than my waist anyways. So. Um, I need that extra give. There wasn't any shaping in the waist on this pattern, um, which when I tried it on before my hips, but like between my, um, the middle of my waist, like the narrowest part of my waist and my hips, um, when I was in between there during the try on, I was kind of sad there wasn't waist shaping because I was like, I don't know if this is going to be very flattering because it's kind of boxy. But now that I've knit past down onto my hips, um, I'm glad that I didn't, that there isn't any waist shaping in the pattern and that I didn't add any because I definitely like the way that it fits. So all that's left is my sleeves here. I have stitches on some spare cables. I have to graft those together and then like I said, the neck. So it's very, very close to being done and I'm really excited about this sweater. Last time I showed it to you guys, um, I forgot to tell you what the name of the yarn was. I did put it in the description box, but I'm knitting this sweater out of Dream and Color Smushy with Cashmere in uh, Prince William and Peacock Shadow. And I just realized there's a tiny little mistake. Look at this. It's inevitable, guys. Do you see right there, right there, right there? I slipped a stitch, so there's only one gray stitch where there should be two. At least it looks like that's what I did. Oh well. It happens. Also, I don't think I mentioned this is a pay for pattern on Ravelry. It is not free, but it is very well written and it is worth the purchase in my opinion. And I am making the small, which I think is 34 inches. The next project I have to show you guys is a pair of socks I've been working on. So since the last time I recorded, I done went and ordered some yarn. <laughs> and this yarn is absolutely gorgeous. So this yarn is, let me grab the tag. It's Lou Cookie yarns and this is her cookie toes base which is 75% virgin wool 25% polyamide superwash and it's 100 grams 
420 meters and this is the colorway apples and pumpkins and um, it's very much apples and or pumpkins and pink lady apples there it's there's a lot of really rich pink in the skein um, bordering on like a magenta pink but I think it's really really pretty so the yarn is very exciting and fun so I decided to do a contrasting toe and heel I ended up deciding to go with Dream and Color Smushy in Humdrum and surprisingly not only does the color match very well the yarn is very similar in texture so if you've worked with Dream and Color Smushy before Cookie Toes is a lot like it um, the gauge I think is just a little off I think Cookie Toes is slightly finer but like barely 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 finer like you can't really tell too much of a difference between the orange humdrum dreaming color and the apples and pumpkin blue cookie yarn um, the socks the pattern I decided to go with is cobblestone which is a pay for pattern and it's it's relatively cheap though I ended up buying it as part of an ebook which is four patterns I have a book called I believe beyond vanilla socks um, part one. So it's either part one or part two. I think it's part one. Um, it's just a very simple knit and purl pattern that's easily memorizable and or easy to memorize. Um, and as you knit it, you can easily pick up from where you left off because you can kind of read your knitting to continue the pattern. This is the first time I've ever put in waist yarn for an afterthought heel and I'm super excited and <laughs> can I just say for a moment that I don't know why I thought that an afterthought heel was a kind of heel maybe you can help me out with this I thought it was its own heel um, but it's more of a method from my understanding that you just put when you're ready to do your heel instead of doing your heel you put scrap yarn in and you just continue knitting your sock and then after you've already finished it you go back and pick up stitches and then knit your heel well, I thought there was like a special afterthought heel like I thought that was the name of the heel not the technique yeah I learned that <laughs> and so now what I'm gonna do is when I do my afterthought heel I'm going to make it a fish lips kiss heel which I've never done before either that pattern is also pay for but it's one US dollar and which is very very inexpensive it's a very long pattern and it has you create a cardboard cutout of your foot which for me is kind of embarrassing so <laughs> um, I cut it out on a Bud Light can <laughs> but um, when you look at my foot because I don't want to turn it around and show you the measurements if that's giving away any of the pattern so you're just gonna see the back here look that's my bunion <laughs> yeah even tracing my foot I get reminded that I have ugly genetically messed up feet and my poor daughter has these too like even though she's almost two you can kind of see the bunion forming on her foot it's unfortunate luckily mine's not so severe that it's causing me pain although my grandma has had surgery on hers and my mom's is so bad that it's like slipped out completely like because what it is is it's your big toe shifting in so that bone at the joint at the bottom is poking out as your toe leans in um, so my grandma had her bone shaved down my mom's is like slipping out really bad but she doesn't want to get any she doesn't want to have surgery or anything and have to take off time from work so I hope mine never gets that bad, but seeing how theirs is developed, mine will probably get there eventually. That was a total side note about my feet. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Anyways, it's nice to have a cardboard cut out for your foot. This is, should help me knit socks to fit my feet better, fingers crossed. So I use this to measure when to put my heel in, and then I'm going to follow the Fish Lips Kiss pattern. It also said 
when you put in your waist yarn to, well, it didn't say when you put in your waist yarn, but it said after you knit your heel to do an inch of stockinette before you start the patterning. So I did that as well. So I'm knitting these, uh, by the way, on US size zero. That's my go-to gauge for socks because it's nice and tight, but not too dense. Um, and these are Chow Gu Red Lace 42. 32 inch. I love them. Um, they're my only pair, but I want to get more. And now the Eat Sleep Knit carries the Chowgu interchangeable sets. I'm super, super tempted. But I don't need that in my life right now, but it's like future goals. And then the reason I've been knitting these so fast is because I've got Halloween on the brain. Like, this is my favorite time of the year. This is my favorite holiday, and it can't get here soon enough. And so I want to knit Halloween socks. I was talking to my friend Lindsay from the Knit Whim Diaries podcast about how I don't have Halloween socks yet. And she was like, are you kidding me? How do you of all people not have Halloween socks yet? And I agree. I don't know why. I have orange socks, but not very specific Halloween socks. Like a lot of people don't like the stereotypical Halloween colors, like the definite black and orange or maybe like that electric green and purple. I love that stuff. I love that is what my life is made of. Um, and I saw this yarn in um, Knitting and Color Shop and I had to have it and I want to cast it on soon. This is Walking with a Ghost on her Glam Rock Sparkle Sock which is 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% 5 5 Stellina. Uh, 438 yards for 100 grams and if we get a super close up here ah, the sparkle is gold and it looks so great and these these will be my very first Halloween socks and I really really want to knit them and that's why I've been flying through these socks so that I can cast these socks on um, I'm thinking contrasting heels and toes in black just to keep the variegation extra fun I'll probably knit another one of the Beyond Vanilla Socks um, pattern that came in the ebook um, when I do this. And then speaking of Halloween, you have you may have seen on Instagram, if you follow me on Instagram, um, I've been posting a lot of my progress of my cross stitch Halloween pattern that I started like two years ago. Still working on it. <laughs> this is it. I'll take it out of the frame so you can see all of it in its entirety in case you haven't seen me post any of it on Instagram or if you haven't seen any of my previous videos where I showed it off. I do apologize if you feel like you've seen this a lot. Cross stitch is a very slow um, craft so I'm not surprised if it's getting a lot of attention um, or repetitive attention. Oh, and by the way, the frame I use is a Q-snap frame, and I believe it's 11 inches. Um, recently, my my frame snap-ons, like these snap-ons, and it's really nice for holding the um, fabric in place, but recently, um, a couple of mine broke. Like this one, you can see has cracked. And I think it's just from, from repetitive use and the fact that it's plastic. It's extremely unfortunate, but I love the frame so much more than embroidery hoops that I just went ahead and bought replacement snap um, edges off of Amazon. So here is the pattern. This is called Wacky Witches and Stitches by Clouds Factory, and it was a mystery stitch along, I believe, two years ago. And um, they're currently hosting one this year, but instead of buying the pattern, I went ahead and pulled out the old one I haven't finished. Um, they were released in, like the frame was released first, and then this was block one, block two, and then I just stitched up block three about last week. And I'm starting on to block four, which, oh. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if you can see it. That's because that's not there. Here it is. I'm starting on the block four, which that is a tree 
which is going to have some zombies coming out of the ground at the bottom with some tombstones and there's a little gap there in the tree for an owl so so it's a really fun project to work on it just is really slow and um, requires a lot of counting which can be distracting when you're trying to watch two children under two you may have noticed my little needle minder here. This guy is super cute, and when I saw him on Instagram, I had to have him. I don't remember if it was limited edition or not, but I want to say that it was. Um, this is a needle minder from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, and it's just so cute with the sheep and the pumpkin in the yarn. It's just a cute mix of two of my favorite crafts. And there's the little magnet on the back. The only thing about having cross stitch with the needle minder on there is I have to put it up as soon as I put it down because I'm like terrified that my children could grab it and somehow get the magnet off and that would not be a good time. So um, I definitely, definitely make sure to put it up because like I'm the kind of mom that like the worst case scenario comes to mind and I just start worrying about things like that. <laughs> it's better to be safe than sorry, right? So that's all I have for you guys for works in progress. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you guys like me, please subscribe for more videos like this. And in the meantime, happy crafting. Bye!